Orin Levy. Say hi, hi Fred. Fred. Hi, Orin. How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you, too. Hey, I have always wondered, how did you get involved with Woody Allen movies? Um, I'll tell you what happened. When I went to drama school, uh, this was back in the late 70s, early 80s, uh, I got out of drama school in 1981. So they had a kind of a collective audition for all the big drama schools, Yale Drama School, where I went, Juilliard, uh, uh, Carnegie Mellon in Pittsburgh, uh, ACT out in San Francisco, all the kind of uh, big name drama schools had a centralized audition in New York, held, a, held a, in the city. And it, it was full of agents and producers and others, guys from Saturday Night Live, people who wanted to see all the, everybody there was, you know, young, young talent. So um, I had kind of a spotty career at Yale, but I did, but I did very well at these last auditions. Um, and uh, a casting director who was there to observe all these auditions. I, I took a kind of a risk in these auditions in that I, 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 I was thinking if I was sitting there for hours watching hundreds of young earnest actors audition, what would I want to see? So I thought something really, you know, ridiculous and funny, but funny in the extreme kind of Monty Python sense. So a friend of mine called Keith Redeen, a playwright, wrote a play that I had done, really silly and ridiculous, but with a nice juicy part for me in it. So me and David Allen Greer and seven or eight other people did this, this scene. And uh, my, what I was hoping would happen happened, which was that the people had been there for hours already. And by the time we came on with our idiotic um, thing, they were really ready for something like that. And it, was, and it went over very, very well. So at the end of that, they, everybody who was interested in meeting you, every agent or producer or director, would, would put your name up on their list. So I was extremely lucky and got my name on a lot of those lists. And one of the lists that I got on was a woman called Juliet Taylor, oh. very famous casting director, um, now retired, but was a you know, discovered many, many, many famous actors, John Floyd, Tom Cruise, millions of actors. Anyway, so she had me, uh, my, my name down there. So I went to meet her. And uh, I left after that to work at the Guthrie Theater, which is a theater in Minneapolis for a year. And when I came back to New York, I just got a call from her saying, uh, Woody would like to meet you. And I was a huge fan of Woody Allen, you know, really loved him. And he was around, his work was around from the time I was a young guy. Um, so I went in uh, to meet him just very briefly. And we talked for a minute or two. And he said, okay, and that was it. And then I got a call the next day saying, um, Woody would like you to play a, a, uh, a doctor in this film, Hannah and Her Sisters. So there was no audition. He just chatted, just you know, said hi to me. That was essentially it. So I did the part in Hannah and Her Sisters, and I didn't know him well enough, or didn't know protocol well enough, that I that I avoided. I did not avoid trying to make him laugh. Trying to make him laugh is really uh, extremely difficult. But I was too dumb and too inexperienced to know this. So I so I tried to be funny, and he actually kind of liked it. I, <laughs> surprise so he cast me in that as a doctor and if you ever go see that movie Hannah and Sisters he thinks he has a a, a brain tumor and there's a series of three doctors who he who he consults and I'm the first doctor who scares the shit out of him um shortly after that I was in Amadeus on Broadway and when I was in Amadeus I had this horrible experience of unbelievable stage fright awful crippling stage fright to the extent that I thought, oh, I made this horrible mistake. I, I don't want to be an actor. I can't stand it. I went to Yale drama school. Everybody said to me, oh, it's very hard. I said, I'll show you and all this. And I got this Broadway gig and I hated it. I couldn't stand it. And I was in this show for 16 months. <sighs> so when I got out of, when the show finally ended, um, I thought, Jesus, what am I going to do? And I started doing voiceovers. And some of you know me from that world. And I did nothing but voiceovers for almost 25 years, except occasionally certain casting directors who liked me, like Juliette Taylor, 
There was another guy, Howard Fewer, and a few uh, Lynn, uh, Lynn Stallmaster. A bunch of casters just liked me for some reason. And they would call me up and they'd say, oh, you know, it's no audition. Woody has a psychiatrist. It's two days. You want to do it? Uh, and because I didn't have the nervousness that most actors do, because I was making quite a good living doing voiceovers and didn't really care that much about the other stuff that I got, I had the great liberty of, of not caring and being kind of relaxed about it. So I did kind of well in these things. And Woody, for some reason, liked me and uh, then just kept putting me in his movies. And uh, I did seven movies, more than any other actor besides Woody and Mia Farrow and Diane Keaton, <laughs> uh, seven of his films. Interestingly, when I began to catch on as an actor, he kind of stopped calling. Um, but uh, years ago, um, I was in a lot of his films and, and he, uh, he took a shine to me for some odd reason. I think part of it was, I was in those days was much heavier than I am today. I was quite large. I was very fat and near to 400 pounds at some point. Some point. And I think that he actually kind of liked, you remember Charlie Chaplin had that, <laughs> <laughs> enormous guy that used to scare him in, in a lot of movies. I think Woody, I think my overbearing presence uh, appealed to Woody. So he would just put me in, in various uh, imposing uh, roles. <laughs> in movies. Um, so that, that was how it started. And occasionally I would see him in New York. I'll tell you one other, one other quick Woody Allen story. Um, Woody Allen is a very, very unusual cat. He's just, a, I, I've never met anybody like him. He's in absolutely the wrong profession because he doesn't like people. Um, he doesn't like being bothered by people or talking to people. He's not, he's not what they used to call a people person in the old days. He's brilliant in my opinion, but he doesn't like, he doesn't like people asking him questions, talking to him. And when you're a film director, that's essentially what your life is about nonstop. People run up to you all day long saying, uh, do you like this one or this one? Do you, should we have the back? Well, we can't get this actor. Can we get another act? It's all it is, is a series of problems to be solved, which require you talking to people, which he can't stand. Um, so I did a play with him on Broadway. It was actually three one acts, one of which was by him. Uh, one was by Ethan Cohen, one was by him, uh, and another one that, that I wasn't in, but I was in those two. And he, since he already knew me, he said, actually, Julia Taylor said, would you mind helping him audition other actors? Just sit in the room and read with them. So I said, no, I'd be happy to. So when you do that, when you audition with uh, audition other actors, you're not there to, you know, to give your opinion. You're just there to read. Uh, so <laughs> I, I was reading with this one guy and inadvertently when the guy was finished i i felt the guy was very good and i out of my mouth blurted that was great oh my god i shouldn't have said anything but i it just came out i just came out of my mouth i said that was great and the guy was very gracious and he left the room and woody walked over to me and he said don't encourage them <laughs> <laughs> thank oh you fred god. that's an emblematic story of the way of the way woody allen is he's, he's just a, he's he's um he doesn't enjoy the, he said to me during the, during the rehearsals of that play, he said, you know, I really like writing. I enjoy writing. And if it were up to me, I would write for four hours every day. I would take a walk in the park. I would have, he has the same dinner every day for a hundred years. He has a filet of sole with green beans and a salad. That's what he eats every day. I would have my filet of sole. I would watch basketball and I would go to sleep and I would not direct any movies. I would just write them but I don't trust anybody else to make my movies. So I'm in this position where I have to make it myself. Mm -hmm. But he, I think he, he, you know, he's a writer at heart who's been thrust into the position of a director, um, which he still, you know, after all these years, uh, wears kind of grudgingly. It's odd. I never knew that. I never knew that he, uh, he did not want to be a director because everybody else, they say, what I really want is to be a director. And he's like, what I really don't want to be is a director. Yeah.